Oh boy, I've been waiting for this one. Custom data. Custom data is something else entirely, man. We've talked about parameters before, right? We've got all these uh, materials over here, which are material uh, instances, actually. Uh, so that's a bad example. <laughs> the dynamic material instances, rather. Uh, but we've got, like, our flat color material, which has this uh, color parameter for the base color, and then it's got, like, a collection uh, parameter as well. I've done a video on that. Go watch that. Uh, and then we've got a uh, different material instance for each color that we could make. We've also covered how we can use that to dynamically set new material instances. But I also warned about how computing intensive that actually is. Because we're using the same quote-unquote material here to make these three different uh, colors. But what is actually happening under the hood is for all of these, if we open up the blueprint in the construction script, we're creating a new dynamic material instance. So we're not just creating a new material instance, it's dynamic, meaning that it like can't compile things down into constant values. Things have to keep open as variables, meaning that they're going to be more computing intensive as a result of that. So these are three separate pretty heavy materials, comparatively. But what if we could have a way to actually just have one material show up as different colors or do anything else with that data. Well, lucky for you, that is actually a thing that we can do. So instead, let's go into our flat color and uh, let's make a, a separate material for this. So flat color uh, custom data. And if we open that up uh, and go into this parameter, we'll also get rid of the scalar uh, for the metallicness because we'll do the same thing for the metallicness, I think, here. And maybe we'll also do the same thing for the roughness, actually. So let's add uh, two more uh, scalar values, convert them to parameters. We'll call this one um, metal, and we'll call this one roughness. Doesn't really matter what you call them, actually, uh, for what we're going to be doing with them. Uh, but let's just set both of these to uh, like a default value of like 0 and then 0 0.5. We're going to turn these parameters into custom data. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to set uh, in the parameter. So we select the parameter and then we go uh, down here to the details panel. And there you will see we have this little section called custom primitive data. And we're just going to check this tick box. So if we check that tick box, it's going to give us some uh, new options here. And that is the primitive data index. What does that mean, you might ask? Well, let's actually just draw that out real quick. Because the custom data is going to be stored in an array. So what it'll do is it'll store them all as float values. And this data index that we have over here, this will just be the starting point of that index. So if we have a color that is going to be three floats and it's starting at index zero. So we have index zero, index one, and index two. These are going to be holding the R, G, drawn with a mouse, give me a break, and B data for our colors. Then if we have more custom data, we don't want those to be stored on indexes zero, one, and two, because those are already in use for our RGB data. So our um, metallicness, for instance, will be stored on number three. So we'll call this metallicness. And then on index number four, we'll store our roughness. But you do want to be a little bit careful about how you order these, because you're likely to use the uh, roughness value here a lot more than we end up using the metallic value. Because the metallic value, we only have like actually set to one. The default will be zero. We want to set that to one when something is metallic, which is not that often like most of the time it's actually not but in order to get to the roughness value which we'll show how to do that in a moment we need to add all of these indexes including the one that we're using it's just a float so it's not that big a deal on a small scale but you probably want to order these from most important to least important so that when you uh, want to access any of these you can easily access only the ones that you're going to often need without needing to add indexes for stuff that you're not going to be working with. So 
This will be uh, index 0, 1, 2, 3. Oh, it's actually a vector 4 because it's also got alpha. So bump everything down one index. Uh, but if we then go into this and we set this to custom primitive data as well, this is also going to be using index 0. So that can be interesting, right? We can, uh, for instance, if we wanted to, and we set this one to primitive data as well, we can maybe, if we really want to, like make this share a, a data input. So if we both set these to four, you can see it actually displays it on those nodes. They're both going to be getting their value from four. So if we set this to one, we're going to have a very metallic and a very rough, so very non-reflective material. If we set this to zero, we're going to have a very reflective non-metallic material. They will be linked to each other. Uh, and we could do something clever with that, uh, doing this like a, a one minus, so that it negates it, makes it negative. And this will now make something uh, very non-reflective and very non-metallic or something that is very reflective and metallic due to just having it both be on uh, custom data index four. Let's actually keep it at that for now. Maybe I'll come back to this and set the roughness to five just to show you. But for now, I think what we want to do is we want to show you how to actually use uh, this data. We can still set a default value for this. I'm pretty sure maybe, maybe not. I don't know. So let's use this material uh, on on these blocks instead. We've had these blocks hanging about for a while now. Uh, I think they are not just static meshes. Never mind, that's not going to work that well. What we're going to do instead is we're going to just simply add a couple extra uh, cubes here. So let's just add in a cube here and we'll add in like two more cubes just for shits and or giggles. And those are all going to be using our uh, new flat color custom data material. Uh, and as you can see, they're all black because that is the default value that we're working with here. If we select one of them and we can just look for custom, we have rendering custom primitive data defaults. And we can add some array elements here, which adds the values for whatever we are working with here. So it uh, adds R, G, and B, and A. And then it adds the value for metallic and roughness uh, too. I think that these are little previews of what indexes exist for this might be new uh, i haven't seen those before but i don't use this too much either if i'm being honest with you i should do as i say not as i do uh, it even gives you a little bit of a warning like hey metal and roughness are both being driven by uh number four here and you probably don't want that but we can now set this to one and you should be able to see that it is a very bad example because it's black uh let's set that <laughs> to like red or well, actually, let's just set it to white. Just setting everything to a value of one. I don't know if alpha is going to really help with that. But now you can see that this is a very reflective, like chrome-like color. If I set the metallic and roughness both back to zero, it's just a opaque, flat white color. Let's set green back to zero. Now it's a pinkish color and so on and so forth. And now I can go into uh, this one and I can add maybe only the first two array elements because I only need the red and the green data because I want to set this to like 60% red and then like 30% green, which will make a very like yellow color. And we don't even need the blue channel here, let alone the alpha or the metallic or the roughness. Now, if I add the metallic uh, value, you will see that it automatically does add in the other indexes before it as well. So I can't just say, hey, I only want the metallic roughness uh, or I only want a green channel because the moment you add an element, it adds all the elements before it as well because it simply just needs that info. But the wonderful thing now is that these are all the same material. They're not dynamic material instances. They're not even material instances at all. They're just the same material rendering with different custom data and there we get into i lied a little bit to you before because we were just getting started with this whole material thing and i didn't want to overcomplicate things we're going to overcomplicate things a little bit now what i said before is that the material instances um will be more performant for your rendering which is still the case uh because it renders the material instances all at the same time as the parent kernel, and that is not actually 100 accurate it's a good enough understanding for a like basic level knowing that material instances make you um, more efficient in your rendering. But it's not exactly because of the reason that I said. Uh, the reason that I said actually applies to this. Because these are now using the same material, they are being drawn together. They're being instanced together uh, and being drawn as one thing, which 
reduces your draw calls, and your draw calls is usually going to be the bottleneck of your renderings. Okay, I'm jumping in here real quick during editing to explain the whole draw call thing a little bit more because I kind of skipped over that, so let's talk about it. The amount of draw calls we have is dependent on two things. Number one, it is the amount of meshes that we have in the scene. Uh, do excuse my bad handwriting, I'm writing with a mouse right now. Uh, we also care about the amount of unique materials that we have, and that does include material instancing. So if we have, like, material instances, every single one of those does count as a unique material for draw call purposes. So these are the two things that we want to uh, look at. And when I say meshes, I mean unique meshes. If you have the same mesh two, three, five, a hundred different times in your scene, those still count as one mesh. That is the entire point of what we're doing here. Because if we have just one mesh, we're just making a, a game out of entirely only cubes, for instance, right? Uh, we're making Minecraft. That is just one mesh. But we might want a grass block, and we might want a sand block, and we might want a uh, separate dirt block, and a stone block, and... Uh, a magma block and whatever right now that makes us uh, up to five different materials those can be material instances because they have the same properties but they have different texture maps so they need to be material instances so we uh, have one mesh but that same mesh is rendered with five different materials across our scene meaning that we just multiply these together to get five draw calls in total and again this mesh can be like instanced a thousand times and um use those different materials on different instances of them and that still results in only five draw calls so that's really really good but now let's say that we want to have green grass and slightly more brown grass and uh, entirely like dead very brown grass are we going to add three more materials uh, to this list, or are we going to change our grass material to use custom data so we can save some draw calls on that? Because that would be a total of eight materials now, uh, still with just one mesh, that is fine, which is now a total of eight draw calls. Again, the amount of instances does not really matter. But now let's say that we want the magma to have a couple of different tints as well. Maybe like very hot magma will be more orange and cool magma will be more red. And we have like a couple of things in between. And now suddenly we're up to like 11 or 12 different materials still with only the one source mesh. And that means that we're now using over double the amount of draw calls already. While we haven't really added any new materials, we've only added variations in color on existing materials. And this is where the custom data thing comes in. Because if we use custom data on those materials, so that probably does mean that they're not going to be material instances because they have different like math going on. Uh, but this is the important part. Don't get stuck on trying to make a material instance when you can try to make a separate material with custom data instead. Because that actually does save you uh, more computing power in the end. Because now we have a, a grass material and a magma material that we can use endlessly for various colors that we want to. If we have like a glass block in Minecraft, like you have 16 different types of glass, right? All the colors of the rainbow and then some. Uh, those could all be in one material with just some custom data. So those don't need to be 16 materials, meaning that you have to have 16 less draw calls or 15 less draw calls, I suppose. And with these like very small numbers, that does not really matter that much, right? Because we're down to like 10 draw calls, 20 draw calls, who cares? But now imagine that we don't have just one mesh with five materials. Now imagine that we have a hundred meshes with uh, five materials instead. Depending on how those meshes and materials are applied to each other, if every single mesh has a version with every single material, uh, at the very worst, uh, we would have 500 draw calls because you can just multiply those together. Uh, to create the amount of draw calls that you can, at the very most, expect. And now you can suddenly see, okay, but if we have like uh, 15 different materials for simple color variation, uh, we're going up to like 100, potentially, again, uh, times 
15. And that then creates suddenly 1,500 draw calls, meaning that with a little bit of clever custom data use, we can save a 1,000 draw calls in this scene, which is going to be a noticeable difference. And if we have even more materials, like the glass that I just mentioned, uh, we can either add just one material to this, making this 600 draw calls, or we could add 16 materials to this, making this up to uh, 3,100 draw calls. Just adding some color variations in our glass more than doubled the amount of draw calls. That's one zero too much, I'm sorry. Still, 3,100 is quite a lot. So you can see how uh, when you scale this kind of thing up, trying to optimize some materials to be able to be used in multiple different ways, like you don't need to have a material for a reflective version of something and a normal version of something. Uh, even with material instancing, you don't need to do that. You should use custom data for that, because if you're doing that for every single material in your game, you're suddenly doubling, tripling, quadrupling, 10 times thing, whatever your draw calls. And that is the thing that's actually going to be killing your performance. So I just wanted to jump in here and give you a little bit more background and a little bit more math. I'm sorry about that. Uh, about the draw calls and what to keep in mind. I've talked about you about material instances before and how important they are. And they can be really important and they should be used wherever you can. Uh, but if for any reason you're like, ah, but in this case, a custom data uh, would maybe work better. A single separate material with custom data, if you're going to be using it a lot, often is preferable to a lot of different material instances. The upside of a material instance is if you have very complex parent materials, uh, it, it just saves some memory. It is really what it comes down to. Because if your um, if your material is like very complex and its like data total is like five megabytes, which might not sound like a lot, but imagine if you have like one material here that is five megabytes and you have like a hundred materials that pretty much do the exact same thing, just have some different parameters. And those parameters are individually a matter of a couple of bytes, unless they're textures, in which case they might go up to like kilobytes. Uh, in some cases, maybe even megabytes. You don't need to store the exact same instructions in your video memory like a hundred times, right? You can just store those instructions once and then only store the parameters for the rest. That is what material instances do for you. They make you a little bit more efficient with your video memory, more so than uh, really saving you any actual render. That is what custom data does. This is still a very brief overview. Of course, this is still an introductory material course. Materials and rendering are, are very complex, okay? We're not going to do a very deep dive into, like, how the code works, because, frankly, I only have a surface-level understanding of that myself, because you don't need to know it in a very deep, in-depth way. You just need to know what bits and what techniques deliver what performance impacts and how to avoid them and what the alternatives are. So custom data, uh, we've done it with color now, we've done it with metallic and roughness, you can do a lot of creative stuff with this. Again, you can combine some things into like the same index, the same like custom data channel. You're not supposed to, the engine really doesn't like it when you do that, uh, because it starts screaming at you, but you definitely can, like it's not going to stop you, it doesn't actually cause any problems. It's just, it doesn't expect you to do that. So go ahead and have fun with some custom data setups. And for the full course, if you're watching this in the future, it should be all up on the YouTube channel already. But if you're watching this shortly after it was uploaded, there will be a link down below in the description to the Patreon where you can find the full course. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas, 